Okay, so what I'd like to talk about in this video is a little bit of the terminology that's associated with a lot of introductory courses um, in probability. So we're going to cover the power set, the Cartesian product, and cardinality. So jumping right into it, if we were given a set, let's call it S, um, you can call it anything you'd like, it could be A, B, C, D, um, no worries on that, but you can, uh, I'm going to call it S just to stand for, you know, set. Um, and let's say it contains the elements 1, I'm sorry, 0, 1, and 2. Okay, and if we were asked to find the power set of this set S, that's denoted P of S, what that means is essentially we're trying to find all of the subsets that are associated with, with this set S. Okay, first and foremost, um, what I think you should just go ahead and write down straight off the bat is something called the empty set. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, um, it is a set that contains absolutely no elements at all. Um, it contains nothing. So it therefore is a subset of S because what subsets mean is that if you were to pick apart all the elements that are in that subset, you could never find an element in that subset that is not an S. So since it contains no elements, the empty set, um, there's going to be no chance of you finding anything in there that's not an S. So it's always, always, always going to be part of the power set um, of any set that you are given. And it's denoted by a zero with a little slash through it. Okay. So you just want to go ahead and write that down straight off the bat um, so you don't forget about it and make sure you get that get that right down so the next thing you want to look at is depending on the size of your set we have a set of three elements um, in our set s so you always want to start out with that number um, of elements for the next set that you're going to put in your power set so um, essentially all that means is rewriting the set that you were given. So 0, 1, and 2. That technically is a subset of itself. The set itself is a subset of itself. Um, and so therefore what we did, what we just did was write down a subset of three elements and then you want to bump down to the next number below that. So now you're going to bump down to subsets of two. And say we had been given a, su a set of six, six elements um, what you would have done is write down that set of six, and then you would have bumped down to five, subsets of five, subsets of four, three, two, you know, so on. Um, but since we're given three, we're going to now bump down to subsets of two. And what I kind of do is do it systematically. I look at the first element in that set, which is zero, and then I associate it with the next element, um, next element over in that set. So zero and one. That's going to be its own subset. Okay, so 0 and 1. Then again, I take that 0 and I associate it with the next number after that, which is also the last number in that set. So 0 and 2 is also going to be a subset. Okay, and then you bump over to the next number. Now we're at 1. If we associated it with the number right before, which is 0, we would have the same set as this. Order does not matter in sets. Um, that is not an issue. You could have written it 1, 0, and it would have been the same set. You could have even written 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. It doesn't matter how many times you even wrote it in the set. Um, all that matters is what is actually contained in it. The actual elements itself um, are what matter. So um, since we have 0 and 1 in that set, that's all that matters. That's all we need. Now we're going to go ahead and associate it with 2. 1 and 2 is a new set, so I'm going to go ahead and write that one down, 1, 2, and then we would bump over to the last number, and we can just go ahead and check that we have all the subsets already. Um, if we were to associate 2 with 1, uh, that, that's right there, and then if we associated 2 with 0, that's right there. So we do now all have the subsets of 2, and then the very last one, um, since we did our subsets of three, subsets of two, now we're gonna do subsets of one. And all that means is writing down um, the elements themselves as sets in here. 
so we're going to write down 0 as its own set, write down 1 as its own set, and finally 2 as its own set. And you are finished. That is a power set of S. Um, so again, it's just you're dissecting the subsets that are within the main set that you were given, which we said was going to be was going to be denoted S. So moving on from that, let's look at the Cartesian product. Okay, in a lot of problems that you're given in these introductory courses, the Cartesian product is usually going to be the set times itself. So in other words, S times S. Um, it could be two different sets. It could be like, say we had set A and set B. You could have, you know, A times B, but that's not usually the case in a lot of these courses. So I'm going to cover the S times S. You would set it up the same way. If you had A and B, you would put the one set on the, the left side and then set B on the right side um, and still do the same method. But I'm just going to go ahead and look at S times S. And it even could be S to the third power, S to the fourth power, in which case you would just multiply that number of S's. So S to the third power would be S times S times S. Um, so we're going to look at S times S because that's the most common. Um, and all you want to do in this case is going to be kind of like the FOIL method. Um, we do have three elements in our set, so it's kind of an extension of the FOIL method. Um, just like you would extend it instead of doing a binomial for the actual FOIL, you would extend it a little bit and um, do it for a polynomial multiplication. But since we have it written out like that, I'm going to go ahead and write out the actual elements of the S set. So it's 0, 1, and 2, um, essentially multiplied by 0, 1, and 2. Okay. And what this comes out to be is, again, if you just kind of like look at it a little bit systematically for the FOIL method, you would take the first element, right, and you would normally multiply by the first element over here. The only thing different about the Cartesian product is that you don't multiply the numbers. You put them into what's called ordered pairs. So kind of like if you were to look at a graph, you'd have ordered pairs of X and Y on, on the Cartesian plane. That's kind of where it comes from. Um, so you have these ordered pairs. And so when you associate this first element here with the first element in the second set, that's all you do is go ahead and write them down as an ordered pair. Order here does matter, it is an ordered pair. So um, as you'll see as we do the next one, so that was the first ordered pair, now we're gonna again take that first element in the first set and multiply it, not really multiply it, but as in the FOIL method, you would kind of associate it with the next element in the second set. So it would be zero and one. You can't write one zero. That is not the same thing. It's always going to have to be the first. Um, the element from the first set is always going to have to be written first. So go ahead and write zero, comma one, second order pair. And then I think you guys are kind of probably picking up the the system by now. Now we go zero to two. Okay, and then you'd move over the next element um, in the first set and do 1 times 0, 1 times 1, 1 times 2. Again, you're not actually multiplying, you're associating it with the same um, element that you would be if you did multiplication, but it, it's not multiplication. Okay, 1 comma 2. Okay, and then finally the third element in the first set associated with the first element so 2, 0, 2, 1, and 2, 2. 0, 2, 1, and 2, 2. And that is our Cartesian product. Um, that one's fairly simple because I think a lot of people are mostly already familiar with the, the FOIL method. So that's not too bad. It's just realizing that they have to be in ordered pairs um, and that you do have to put the element from the first set first and then the element from the second set second in that ordered pair. Okay, and then the final thing I just want to talk about in this video is the cardinality. So what cardinality means is um, kind of 
a lot of times they write it like this, the cardinality of S is the number of elements in that set. So the number of elements in set S is three. So the cardinality is three. If I were to ask for the cardinality of the power set, so P of S, that is, you can just go ahead and count them. Um, we're gonna see that it's eight elements in there. I'm gonna go ahead and write down eight. But instead of just actually counting them, if you wanted a more mathematical um, look at it, it's going to be two raised to the power of the cardinality of that set S. So in our case, it was three, right? So two to the three gives you eight, um, as we would hope for. So that's the, the cardinality of power set. The cardinality of the Cartesian product S times S, um, if, again, if you just wanna go ahead and count them, you'll see that it's nine, nine elements in there. But another way to look at it is if you were to look at the cardinality of each of those sets I were looking at, so we did S and S, but if it was the cardinality of A and the cardinality of B, it would be the, the same type of thing. So the cardinality of S um, literally multiplied by the cardinality of the second set, which again is S in our case. And so since the cardinality of S was three, cardinality of S is three again, and the second one, three times three gives you nine.